On day one, I spawned inside of a tall lava volcano as a baby lava worm. I looked around and watched as my fellow worms burrowed into the lava and used it to build up our home. Whoa, can I do that too? Just then, the sky above us turned gray and water started to blast down from the top of our volcano. Everyone run! One by one, every time they got hit, they would instantly turn into a obsidian no in a huge wave entered in the water reptiles men attack they flooded in through every corner of our once beautiful home and made sure that all of my kind was no more yes all of your pathetic lava monuments have already been taken over with your power gone, the lava people shall perish under the name of Cascade! I was scared and didn't know what to do. But then behind me emerged my mother. We have to go now. The two of us began to run through the battlefield. But just then, my mom got hit by a heavy water attack. Ah! Mom! This way, hurry! On day two, my mom and I were slithering through the volcano's tunnels as fast as we could. The reptiles were chasing after us and their presence alone turned the very lava in our caves to obsidian. This isn't good. But up ahead was a lava door passageway. It's an exit. Sadly though, before we could reach the lava, it mostly turned into obsidian. No, we're trapped. Is this it? Move aside. My mom then used a crazy lava power, building up a wall of lava that separated us from the lizards. And from it summoned a lava protector. The water reptiles began began to fight the Lava Guardian and were doing everything they could to get through. Blast this wall with water! Bozo, my boy, listen to me. I am, I'm not gonna make it, but you can. No, but. No, but. It is now up to you, the last Lava Worm. In order to save me and the rest of our people, you must go out and find the five Lava Monuments, reignite them, and unleash the Lava Warrior. Only then can we Win this! Just then, the lava wall got bursted through! Get them! Mom, no! She hit me through the crevice of the lava, and as I escaped, she also got turned into obsidian! Mom! I knew that I had to keep going, so I swam through the lava until I reached a shoreline. I have to find the lava monuments? Where do I even begin? As I finished my sentence, I saw a herd of magma snails charging right towards me. Oh no. On day three, I was bracing for impact, but the snails just ran right through me. The water reptiles found our monument. Everybody leave. Monument? Somebody please help. I followed the noises, entering what looked to be a burrow, but everything here was was destroyed. This isn't good. Stay away from me! I then looked out in the center of the room and saw a tiny baby magma snail cowering in fear. And is that a water golem? Lava must perish! Oh no, I have to help! On day four, I did my best to try and reach the baby snail, but the golem noticed and swung at me immediately. Ah! Not only did he try to smash me with his large rocky fists, but he also shot out beams of water straight from his eye and from them summoned water minions. What the? They all began to slash at me and hurt a lot. Help me! That crazy golem was summoned by those lizards to destroy my home. Not if I have anything to say about it. I finally avoided its hits and reached the vantage point with the snail. And just as I did, I felt a strange feeling from within me, causing me to shoot out a deadly lava shot right at the golem. Whoa, I have lava powers. The golem tried his best to fight back, but with my newfound confidence, I was able to counter him again and 
again. This is for my mom. And just like that, the golem was defeated. Because of his death, the entire room began to rumble and all of the watery destruction disappeared as the room transformed back into its former glory. Because of this, my body began to change. I was now a larger lava worm and gained five more hearts. Whoa, this must have been one of the five lava monuments. Yeah, it was. And you brought it back to its glory. It looks like you got stronger when you did as well. Thanks for saving me. My family all ran away and left me behind. Well, don't worry. I lost my family too. Maybe we can help each other get them back by stopping these water reptiles. Agreed. My name is Magmo. On day five, Magmo and I went to work by gathering enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. From there, the two of us started to build up our very own homes inside of the monument. I made sure to take my time and make my own room nice and perfect. Hopefully, we can stay safe down here, the Blazing Burrow. Awesome. I think it's a perfect home. Just then, I noticed that I had a strange lava core inside of my inventory. I must have gotten this when I ignited the monument. Out of nowhere, the core came to life and popped out of me. What the? Hey, get back here. I chased the core down the burrow's tunnels until we reached a large room that held a stoned over statue. Without a second to think, the core shot itself within it, causing the entire statue to change. Wait a minute. Is this? Yup. This was our mighty lava warrior, the protector of all lava creatures. But when our monuments faded away, it looks like he did too. But if we ignite all of the monuments, then he will be back. So that's what I'm going to do. Just then, explosions sounded off on our roof. What is that? On day six, I followed the explosions until I saw coastal stables being under attack by the water reptiles. There were fire horses doing everything they could to escape, but the lizards made quick work of them and even captured a few groups. I will ask you one more time. Have you seen a rogue lava worm? No, we haven't. Please, leave us alone! You all had one job! Those lava creatures have taken something important from me, and they deserve this! None shall live, not even that pathetic worm! Just then, a couple of scouts walked towards them. We have to find that worm so that our plan for mass destruction succeeds. Go to Magma Rock Volcano and make sure that he doesn't try to ignite it. Magma Rock Volcano? Can that be another monument? The scouts all left, and I knew that I had to follow them. It wasn't long until we made it to a shoreline, and they quickly started to walk across the ocean? Great! How am I supposed to get there now? Just then, I got attacked behind by an undead spirit? Ah! What the? On day seven, the undead spirit continued to fight me. I was about to defend myself until... Take that! Who are you? I am Captain Babybeard. And it looks like there are even more spirits out and about. I am so confused. The baby pirate told me to follow him, and I did. It wasn't long until we reached a tropical cove that had a pirate ship far off on the water. That be me ship, but it was stolen by all these undead pirates. Wait a minute. If I help you get your ship back, can you take me to Magma Rock Volcano? Certainly. I love sailing. Now, how am I supposed to get on board? I looked over and noticed a rocky path that led straight to the side of the ship. Bingo! I began to partake in jump after jump, but as soon as I started... We have an intruder! Fire! Uh-oh! 
on day eight, the pirate ship began to blast at me with deadly cannon fireballs. Ah! I did my best, landing each jump, and knew if I fell into that water, I was done for. Sink him! Just one more jump. Come on! Yes! But then, the undead pirates all charged at once! Bring it! They sliced at me every chance they could. But since I was a newly upgraded lava worm, I had a new ability that allowed me to rain down lava rocks from the sky. Aha! Take that! With my new lava abilities, these undead pirates didn't stand a chance. Curse Ahoy! Ye did it, laddie! Ye beautiful ship! I've missed you! I'm just happy that you have what's yours. Now, do you think you can take me to that volcano? Certainly! Drop the mast! It's time we set sail! On days 9 to 10, the baby captain's ship docked at the shore of a very intimidating island. But the volcano's lava wasn't its natural color and looked more like water? Oh no, something isn't right here. Be careful, laddie. I will wait here. I walked on the island and immediately noticed a trail of water that had wrapped around the volcano all the way up. The reptiles must have beat me here. I followed the trail and even used my lava abilities to help me climb up some parts of the volcano until I finally reached the top where I saw Medusa standing at its core, the entire volcano. It's stoned over. <laughs> the lava worm. We have finally met. On days 11 to 12, I was face to face with Medusa. Wait, are you teaming up with the water reptiles? Why, yes. The very reptiles that are connected to my hair informed me of Cascade's mission. And honestly, I couldn't agree with them more. Medusa began to attack me with poisonous attacks. Ah! She would then get close and use her claws to slash at me. Stop this! They're hurting innocent lives! Families! You think that is bad? Just wait until you see what they have planned next. I would defend myself using my lava abilities, but she then lurched forward and stared me down with an intense gaze. Ah! Wait, was that supposed to hurt me? Ugh, why aren't you turning to stone? Oh, I don't have eyes. Gah, no matter. Medusa then summoned up a pillar of stone and continued to shoot down at me. None of my abilities can reach her. What am I gonna do? Wait a minute. I called down my molten meteor attack right in front of Medusa, creating a magma platform. Yes, I ran, jumping from the new magma platform. And as soon as I landed next to Medusa, I took her down with one final hit. What? Because of her defeat, the entire volcano became active again. Lava began to flow as I felt myself drawn in its power. I grew larger, gained five more hearts, and now had the ability to slither across lava. On days 13 to 14, I went back to my base with Captain Babybeard. Thanks for letting me stay with you. With those darn reptiles running around the ocean, it isn't very safe. Of course, you will be okay here. I found a spot in the base to build him up his very own miniature pirate ship. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Fozo. Also, if you find yourself running across any maps, give me a holler. I am sure we can find ourselves some treasure. Will do, Captain. I then made it over to the Lava Warrior and placed down the second core. This caused him to light up and break free even more. Wow, I can't wait to see how he's gonna look when he's back to his former glory. Hey, <coughs> oh, Bozo! I looked over and saw that Magmo's shell was cracked? What happened? I went out searching for the next lava monument, but when I found it, I got attacked. I feel so weak. Oh no, I need to fix you up, but how? You know, I think I know a place that can help. On days 15 to 16, I journeyed out of the base with the magma snail until we reached a blazing bridge that led to a lava swamp. 
who lives here? We were about to cross over when we realized that the bridge was totally collapsed. Oh, come on. We need to get across. Yeah, yeah, join the club, buddy. I looked over and crawling on the side of the bridge was a lava axolotl. What the? Hey, we need help fixing my snail's shell. Oh, well, the only one that can help fix something like that is our grand axolotl. And unless you can get us across the bridge, we ain't seen them anytime soon. Ah, uh, I think... I think I have an idea. Everyone, stand back! When everyone cleared out of the way, I used my new lava slither ability to form a layer of lava across the broken bridge. Because of this, I was able to walk across and forge it fully back together. Yes! Eh, show off! But I will say that was kind of impressive. Come on, this way, to the Grand Axolotl! On day 17 to 18, we followed the axolotl deep into his lava swamp until things started to look strange. Just over this hill. We're close. We then finally reached his home, only to see weak and frail axolotls roaming around. There. <coughs> He's the one that can help us. In the center of the camp was the grand axolotl. What is the meaning of your visit? My friend, he needs your help. He's getting weaker by the second. And so are my people. The water reptiles destroyed our home, all because that Cascade wants his revenge. Revenge? What happened to him? A volcanic eruption, one that destroyed his home and changed everything he knew. And now he only knows destruction. I'm so sorry he attacked your people. But please, if you help my friend, Friend, I know somewhere safe for you all to hide. Hmm, so be it. Step aside. I did as he said, allowing him to approach Magmo. In a blast of mighty fire, the axolotl sealed his cracked shell, and Magmo became even stronger. Whoa! I, I feel like a brand new car! Let's go! Time we go to the next lava monument, the Lava Forge! On days 19 to 21, I followed Magmo as he led me to an ashen desert? Yep, it's not too far away. But I then saw a small group of water reptiles marching in a different direction. Where are they going? I have to find out. Bozo, stop! It's too dangerous. I followed behind the reptiles as they entered into a desolate landscape. What is this place? I then saw their main base. The place looked destroyed, and it seemed like it was still in repair, but reptiles were working everywhere. They had anvils and other materials to reinforce their weapons. I went further in to investigate and came across a courtyard, one that was full of obsidian statues. My people and mom right next to her was an open spot. Is that supposed to be for me? Keep at it, boys! I watched as Cascade was up above the others. Our progress on the water volcano is coming along! And once it is finished, its eruption will be the biggest this world has ever known! All of those wretched lava creatures will be disposed of! Wait, did he say a water volcano? Now, take these disgusting statues and get them out of my sight. Then find that lava worm. Everything in me wanted to run in and fight, but then Magma moved in front of me. Bozo, no, we need to go. You're not strong enough. I know, Magmo, you're right. Let's go. On days 22 to 26, the two of us finally made it to the Ashen Desert. Whoa! Out in the distance was a tall plateau that held the Lava Forge, but it was completely turned off. As we made it to the entrance, I noticed that it was dark inside. Uh, hello? Suddenly, a hidden figure attacked me from the side. Ah! 
there standing over me was the Forge Master. You have no place here. He began to attack ruthlessly with his saw blade hand. Hey, knock it off. I began to fight back and launched my fire burst attack, causing the dark interior of the forge to light up. Oh, you're not a water reptile. I'm sorry. We are here because we want to reignite this place. Yeah, good luck with that. He started to walk off deeper inside. Hey, where are you going? I followed him until we made it inside of an engine room, which was completely shut down. Around the entire area were five empty fuel cells. My heat sources and lava creepers all got scared away when those water lizards showed up. They all ran off to who knows where, causing this forge to shut off. So, if we find them, we can reignite the forge. Can you show me which way they ran? On days 27 to 29, I left magma with the forge master as I began to search around the ashen desert. How hard can finding five lava creepers be? Aha! There! Who are you? Someone that's gonna get you back home. I continued to search, finding the second one hiding in a cluster of rocks, the third chasing a fox, and the fourth one hiding inside of a cave. Now, just to find the last one. <laughs> What was that? I ran over and followed the screams until I reached an oasis. But in the water was a massive water elemental. Hold on! I ran in and attacked the elemental. Take that! Ugh, Cascade has been looking for you. Come here! We began to fight and his attacks hurt me a lot. Ah, I hate water! <laughs> You are weak! No, I'm not! I blasted the elemental with all of my lava power I could muster, causing him to evaporate and shrink down in size? What the heck? Sorry. With one final hit, he was down for good. Yes. You saved me. Thank you. Of course. Now, let's get you guys back home. On days 30 to 32, I went back to the lava forge with all of the creepers behind me. Hey, forge master. Oh, you found them. Come on, get back in here. All of the lava creepers jumped into their tubes and almost instantly, the forge filled with light. So Sweet! Yes! The forge is now fully operational again! Because of this, I felt the monument of the forge start to empower me! I grew in size, gained five more hearts, and now I could rain down a beam of lava on my enemies! Awesome! Wow, Fozo! You look great! Thanks! We should head back to our base and check on the others. On days 33 to 35, we made it safely back to home and noticed that the axolotls also made it there. Thank you for letting us stay here. Of course! Let's get you all settled in. I had gathered enough materials from my adventure to build up the axolotls their very own lava swamp. And done! Why, I love it! From there, I went to the Lava Warrior, and as I approached, the Lava Orb shot out inside of him, and it seemed to empower him even more. Yes! It looks like we only need to recover two more monuments. Hey, back off! Was that Baby Beard? What's going on? I ran out of the base above ground and watched as multiple of the water reptiles were escorting him through the forest. Get your slimy hands off of me! Oh no, I have to help him! On days 36 to 39, I tried to follow behind the water reptiles as fast as I could until I reached a clearing showing their base. Everything looked even more fortified and repaired. Oh no, I can't just run in there. I need to stay hidden. I slowly snuck my way through and around the base, avoiding every reptilian soldier. Finally, I made it inside one of the structures, and that's when I saw Baby Beard trapped in a cage. I know you are working with him, so where is that wretched worm? I will tell you nothing! Ah! 
Cascade struck out at Baby Beard through the cage. No, I can't let him take anyone else from me. Hey, Cascade! You! Yeah, it's me. Now back away from my friend. <laughs> I'm glad that we finally get to meet. Oh, so. You're horrible! Taking innocent lives? My family? And for what? Power? Power! You think this is about power? You know nothing! On days 40 to 44, Cascade and I began to fight as he would attack me in a rage! Ah! I would fight back with all of my strength, but his water attacks made me weaker and weaker! I said, stay back! I am my new lava strike, knocking him away. If it weren't for you, ignorant lava kind, my family would still be here. What are you talking about? I once lived in peace with my family, my kids, my love. But because of creatures like you, an erupting volcano destroyed my homeland, making it the wasteland you see today. Waves of magma and fire burned it all to the ground, and my family with it. Cascade, uh, I I'm sorry, but... Silence! All of you lava kind shall feel the same pain that I felt! He charged in to attack me again. Wait! But suddenly, a portal opened up right underneath me and sucked me in. And shortly, Captain Baby Beard followed. On days 45 to 47, the pirate and I fell through a strange portal and landed in an even stranger area. Ah, where are we? You are exactly where you need to be. I turned around and coming out of the shadows was a female devil. Uh, who are you? Calm down, Fozo. I simply brought you here because I need your help. All right, help with what? She brought us out of this strange cave and to an overlook where I saw a pool of lava surrounded by five otherworldly pillars. I am from the underworld and you are going to help me get back by igniting all of those pillars. The underworld? How did you end up here then? That is none of your business. <sighs> the portal simply needs one that yields the magic of lava. So, can you get started? And why would I help you? Because one of the lava monuments that you seek reside in my realm, the Magma Chalice. The Magma Chalice? All right, lady. Fine. I fired my lava at one of the pillars, causing it to ignite. I slithered down and repeated on each and every one of the pillars until finally all of them were lit up with fire. This caused the entire cavern to shake violently. Uh, did I do something wrong? But then the lava pool in the center transformed into a deep passageway that led straight underground. Okay, kind of scary. On days 48 to 52, the devil lady and I jumped down into the hole, falling all the way down into the underworld. As I looked at my new surroundings, everything was horrifying and felt like a nightmare. But I then looked up at a hill and noticed a cute little goat. Aw, at least not everything here is bad. Look at you. Wait, don't. <laughs> you fool. In a fiery explosion, the goat turned into a full-fledged demon. Ah, what the heck? No living visitors are allowed in the underworld. And you, you know you don't belong here. The demon started to attack. He would use fiery blasts and his large, deadly scythe to his advantage. I tried my best to fight back, but because he was in his own terrain, he was much stronger. Ah, knock it off! Then the devil woman started to attack with me. She struck back at him with close range attacks and would even throw out spinning blades too. Whoa, she was awesome. Now let's finish this together. In a coordinated strike, the woman and I took the goat demon down. Curses, I won't forget this. 
Thank goodness he's dealt with. All right, Fozo, a deal's a deal. I'll lead you to where the magma chalice is being held. On days 53 to 56, the devil lady led me towards a castle that was in the distance. So, uh, it's in here? Yup. Have fun. Wait, where are you going? Uh, gee, thanks. I entered the main castle doors, not seeing a soul in sight until finally ahead of me, I found the large magma chalice. That's it. But why is it full of dog food? <laughs> Who goes there? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't mean you any harm. A living visitor? Leave my little home. This castle is little to you? Whatever. Look, I I'm sorry, but I won't leave until I ignite that chalice. <laughs> well, I'm not giving it to you. It's my new dog bowl. I lost my other one. To be honest, I really miss it. Wait, if I can find it, do you think I can have that chalice then? On days 57 to 59, Cerberus and I made a deal, making me venture across the underworld. I used my lava slither ability to help me journey across the large pools of soul lava. Now, where would I be if I were a dog bull? Just then, I heard a noise coming from the other side of the lava lake. Is that... Music? What the? As I made it over the lake, I saw a large group of shrub creatures dancing around in an underworld beach. Raised up in the center of it all was Cerberus's bowl. But why is it filled with boiling water? Whoa, whoa, hold up. I don't remember you being invited to the party. Explain yourself. It's okay. I'm just here for that bowl. Oh, you mean our hot tub? No way, pal. It's ours. More of the dancing shrubs started to circle around me aggressively. They looked like they wanted a fight. Okay, everyone, just calm down. There has to be a way I can get that bowl from you all peacefully. Hmm, okay, maybe one thing. Follow me. On day 60 to 63, I followed the shrub to a strange boiling hot lake. So, this used to be our huge hot tub, but then that grumpy old mushroom over there started to get all cranky. If you can go talk that bummer down, then the bowl is all yours. Got it. I walked over to the mushroom grove and looked for whoever this shrub could have been talking about. And that's when I found a mushroom with legs? Uh, hello? Grr! The creature then instantly started to attack. Whoa! He chased me around the grove, shaking off poisonous spores every chance that he could. Hey, just knock it off! Never! I will not let these bratty shrubs destroy my lake! I started to fight back with my lava abilities, but I could see that they hurt him a lot. Wait, why would the shrubs do that? Yeah, dude, we don't want to destroy anything. We just want to swim and party! The mushrooms seem to calm down and come to his senses. Oh, well, in that case, I could use a little company once in a while. Awesome! Come on, everybody! Let's dance! More and more of the shrubs came back around the boiling water and continued to all dance. Problem solved. Now, to grab the bull and get back to Cerberus. On days 64 to 68, I grabbed Cerberus's bull from the beach and returned to his castle to trade with him. Here you go, bud. Huh? Yes, 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 yes! Cerberus is so excited about his bull that he jumped for joy, shaking the ground with each pounce. He would even launch otherworldly attacks in his excitement. Okay, all right, boy, calm down. Uh, 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 Retro, sorry, I just really missed it. Please, do with the magma chalice whatever you wish. I went up and cleared the dog food out of the chalice so that I could blast it with my lava. This caused it to ignite and lighten up the room. Yes, I felt the underworld monument start to empower me. I gained five more hearts as I grew in size and gained the ability to attack with lava inferno chains. Awesome. 
On day 69 to 73, I exited from the underworld entrance to find that Magmo was there waiting for me. What's going on? Uh, something happened while you were away. We gotta go now. Huh? Where are we going? We went as fast as we could until I saw it. The water volcano. It was massive and its power was causing the whole world to shake. Keep fueling it fueling it? I decided to take a closer look with Magmo. So we snuck into the surrounding base. As we got near the top of the volcano, we saw that the reptiles were dumping my people inside of the core. No! I rushed in fast to defend them, using my new Inferno Chain's ability to take out the reptiles. But then, coming around the corner was a much stronger looking elite. Ah! The boss will be very happy with your capture, Lava Worm! Not if I have anything to say about it! Magmo and I began to attack as the Elite would try to push through our flames and get in close. And as he did, would swing at the Magma Snail. Watch out, Magmo! Magmo then launched a powerful earthquake attack to hurt the Elite badly. I then followed with my Inferno Chains for one final hit! Woohoo! We did it! After his defeat, the elite dropped a fire feather? I picked it up and then looked towards my mother's statue. Thank goodness you're okay, mom. Now, time to bring you all home. On day 74 to 77, I returned to my base with everyone. I went quickly to work, building up an area for my people's statues. Hopefully soon, I can free all of you guys. I also added more defenses and measures to fight against the water reptiles. That'll make sure no one could come in here and take you all away from me again. I promise, Mom, I will see you again. After that, I went to where the Lava Warrior was in my base, and another core absorbed into him. It looks like he's almost fully ready. Cascade and his men won't stand a chance. Suddenly, I felt my body begin to burn. Ah, what is that? I quickly dropped the burning feather I got from before, but as it hit the ground, it transformed into a small phoenix? Ah, boy, am I glad not to be stuck with those reptiles anymore. Oh no, did they capture you? Yeah, can you believe that? I'm just a messenger here, and actually, I was looking for you. Me? For what? I come with a message from my lord, the Lava Phoenix. He has much to discuss with you about the last remaining lava monument. On day 78 to 80, I went with the little phoenix as he led me to a lush mountain. And on the cliffs high above was some sort of giant cage. We continued until reaching the interior of the golden structure. Well, good luck. In a small burst of flame, he turned back into the burning feather. Great. Then the air started to heat up as I heard a loud, intimidating caw. Flying into the structure were the massive wings of the Lava Phoenix. So, the last lava worm. Welcome to the final lava monument, the Pyro Pillars. Around the area were three tall pillars coated in smoldering ash. To awaken this monument again, the pillars must be reborn like a phoenix from the ashes. Sounds easy enough. But I am still not convinced of your worth. You are just a worm, after all. Well, someone's got to stop these reptiles, and it's going to be me. Very well. Time to prove it. Bring good. On days 81 to 85, I began to move around the room, dodging attacks from the Phoenix. He's not holding back at all. He would attack with everything he had, but I dodged and used the lava ability to ignite the first pillar. Yes, he continued to fly and attack as I was trying to get past him. Uh, yeah, my attack flew out and struck them, causing the second second pillar to also ignite. Just one to go. Surprising, coming from a worm, huh? Roar! 
The Phoenix flew straight towards me in a rage. He struck me with a very powerful attack that I was knocked down to only a few hearts. Ah! Now, when you are at your end, can you still prove your worthiness? I have to. For my family. For everyone. I sent out blasts of lava. More powerful than I ever had before. This caused the phoenix to dodge out of my way. And for my attack to hit the pillar dead on. Because of this, the monument changed. I felt myself empowered by the pyro pillars. Gaining 10 more hearts. And now I could call down a large explosive meteor attack. Yes, I did it. That you did, Worm. So go and revive the Lava Warrior to stop Cascade. On days 86 to 90, I was making my way back to my base when suddenly the world began to shake. I watched as in the distance, Cascade's water volcano had been completed and it started to unleash a massive torrent of water into the sky. Finally, the entire world will know my pain. It began to rain heavily as the river and sea began to overflow and valleys everywhere started to flood. No, no, no. I need to get back to my base now. On days 91 to 94, I rushed back to base. Magmo, mom! But as I arrived into the burrow, I noticed all of the lava worm statues had come back to life. Fozo! Mother! You did it, my boy. You ignited all of our monuments. And because of you, you freed your people. I'm so happy you're both okay. There's just one more thing to do before we all take on Cascade. I walked over to the Lava Warrior and allowed it to absorb the final core. Our base began to quake as the Guardian was now fully awakened. Ah, the Lava Warrior. Yes, it's me. I've revived you so that you can help us stop Cascade and the water reptiles. Me? I was never meant to be the one to stop them, my dear boy. What do you mean? Can't you see? All of this was to prove your worth. This is your fight, your journey, Pozo. And you are to be the Lava Warrior. With those final words, the Lava Warrior passed on all of the Lava Core's essence to me. I felt the lava element within me surge with power like I had never felt before, causing me to grow much stronger. It's up to me. Then it's time to take down Cascade. On days 95 to 99, I marched towards the water volcano with the power of the Lava Warrior. There, watching over me from atop the mountain was none other than Cascade. Look who finally decided to show up. I thought you had run away after taking back your people. You're wrong, Cascade. I saved them with the power of the lava monuments. And now I'm gonna stop you. Is that so? Ha! Men, drown him! An army of water reptiles poured out of the kingdom and overran me. I did everything I could to clear out the army of them as I launched down lava meteors and infernal chains. But more and more of them just kept on coming. I continued to push my way further into the kingdom, but knew that I didn't have time for this. Suddenly, I heard a familiar voice call out into the air. Crashing in the center of Cascade's base was Captain Babybeard's entire pirate ship. I've been waiting to do this for a long time, you overgrown lizards! Fire! His ship's cannons obliterated all of the reptiles in sight, leaving an opening. Sorry I'm late, Lava Warrior. Go on ahead! Thanks, Captain! Here I come, Cascade. On day 100, I made it to the top of the water volcano to finally face Cascade. I thought maybe you'd understand how I felt after what I almost did to your people. You can't just hurt people. No one meant to destroy your home. Enough! 
We started to battle my empowered lava against this powerful water. Obsidian and small boulders would form as we would clash. I could tell that Cascade wasn't holding anything back as he would shoot out loads of water waves towards me. He then decided to come in close as we just kept trading our elemental hits. <laughs> In a flurry of hits, Cascade overpowered me, sending me backwards. Yeah, he's still so powerful. With the power of this geyser, I will show you all. Not if I have anything to say about it. I use my lava abilities, focusing all of my energy on taking him down. With my final attack, I summoned down a massive magma meteor shower. It crashed down onto the volcano and even landed straight onto Cascade, defeating him for good. Yes, I did it. And with that, the world could now live in peace.